see the cardiologist again today and follow up from having a heart cath on Friday and all that stuff. And um, let me just say this first of all, everybody please pay attention. Start taking care of yourselves now because it's better you take care of yourselves than you have to be a cardiologist. Okay? Because those guys are no fun. He's taking more stuff away. No. He's taking my soft drinks away. I will not be fun to be around until Ella Rose gets here. Uh, I can't drink my protein shakes in the morning uh, because they're trying to figure out why my heart is, is slowing down. Uh, the heart cath was good. My arteries are good. He showed me uh, the films today. My main arteries for my heart are all great. They're all clean. They're all well. I do have one artery, it branches off, it's about 20, 30% blocked, he said that's no big deal, uh, but, you know, they're trying to figure out why I'm having the episodes that I'm having, so he said too much protein can affect your heart, so he took my protein shakes, took my soft drinks, so it's like pouring acid on top of acid, and I'm, so he said, why don't you drink coffee or tea, I said, because they don't taste good, you know, so, uh, and he, what else he, oh, this was a biggie. You know, since COVID, I've been on vitamin C a 1,000 milligrams a day because I'm shaking all y'all's hands and I'm traveling and doing all that. He said, uh, vitamin C is good if you are sick or if you've been exposed to somebody that's sick. He said they did a, a, a lengthy study that Folks that had heart attacks, if you took vitamin C every day, you had a more severe heart attack than people who didn't take vitamin C every day. I'm thinking, what a blessing. I'm glad I went and saw the cardiologist today. So as of now, they've taken me off about four medicines and all my fun stuff I like to drink and eat and all that kind of stuff. Actually, they haven't taken anything away from my food palate yet, but, you know, we're working on that, I guess. So he don't know how much red meat with protein that I eat. But anyway... Uh, so we're we're still in the trying to figure out stage. I got to wear a halter monitor next week. Unfortunately, it's not while I'll be preaching. I'm thinking about calling and rescheduling that deal because I want to see their reaction <laughs> to what that thing does when I'm preaching. You know, that might give them a little insight. I don't know. So anyway, um. Being a cardiologist had a good relationship. You know, we got a good relationship going on today. We talked Corvettes today, so we had a good time today. But anyway, um, so that's the latest. I don't know any more other than stick around because that's what I plan on doing. So anyway, there you go. Let me give you some announcements. We'll get into service tonight. Uh, uh, I hope you've been praying about revival and, and praying that God sends it. I did print up some flyers there, Miss Brittany put together a flyer and, and she's posting it on some social media and I sent it to Brother Aaron and he's posting it on social media but if you want to, to take a flyer and invite somebody personally or something I've got some flyers out there uh, she did a great job on them I really wish she wouldn't have put that big of a picture of Cody Zorna he is not a handsome man so I don't know why he is on there like that but um, when you hand it to somebody put your thumb over his picture alright when you hand it you know, so uh, don't tell him I said that, okay? Please don't. Uh, but anyway, uh, revival's coming up here in a couple weeks, and uh, I'm excited, looking forward to uh, what the Lord's going to do that week. Uh, thank you for those that have signed up your children, your grandchildren for the Easter egg hunt. If you haven't, please sign up. Uh, that'll be on uh, April the 8th at 11 o'clock here at the church. Uh, also, the mother-daughter da banquet, a lot of you have signed up. Thank you for doing that. Um, they need to be signed up by the 22nd of April. The mother-daughter banquet will be May 6th at 11 o'clock. And um, there is a sign-up sheet out there for that. Uh, the missionary wife for the month is Sister Cooley. And Miss Caitlin has taken up the uh, uh, offering for that. And there is a card up here to sign for that. Uh, and... Um, we did put together some more flash drive packets. We've got, uh, we put together a couple hundred of them. They're in the coat room. If you would like to take some of those flash drive packets and pass them out to people you know. Uh, the booklet's different in this one than the original one. And so uh, you feel free to take those and pass those out because uh, uh, you never know how they'll impact somebody's life, all right? Uh, I believe Miss Nett's got a card if you want to see her after church, uh, a card for Tay and Christian if you want to sign it from the church family. Uh, she's got a card, and uh, 
uh, we got a little gift card we're going to put in there and, and give to them. So uh, uh, see her after service for that. Who's ready to worship? All right. Who's going to sing tonight? All right, Sid. Clint, you're too slow in your old age. Uh, you got to be quicker. Huh? All right. It used to be so hard just to lift up my hands. Real liberty was something I just didn't understand. I was bound by circumstances only God knew about. But I left them at the altar. Now I can say without a doubt, I'm free to worship, free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. After all he's done for me, I've got so much to praise him for. All the things that used to bind me will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. There are so many things I've been through in my life. And you don't know the many times that God has touched my mind. All the things that used to bind me now are laying at his feet. So if you don't want to praise him, then please don't hinder me. Because I'm free to worship, free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. After all he's done for me, I've got so much to praise him for. All the chains that used to bind me will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship. Free to worship the Lord. <clears throat> All right, Brother Clint, you're up. <clears throat> Sing, come morning. Brother Seal said we were, we've become a generational church, and that's a great thing when you yes. look out over your church and you see little babies and yes. kids and young people and families and elderly all together worshiping the Lord. Amen. That's what it's all about, just worship Him. Amen. God's children do love heaven. Oh, 
Anybody else got a song on your heart? Anybody want to brag on Jesus? Go ahead, Miss Fedora. Bless your heart. We're certainly thrilled the Lord sent you all our way. Sure. He always knows who we need and knows when to send them. And, uh, go ahead, Miss Mary. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. He sure did. Right? Amen. But it's all in his timetable. Yeah. And he's left you here because he still has something for you to do. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Oh, I'm sorry. Miss Natalie. Yeah, true. And I haven't really thought of it that way. Why are we not talking about the how like people don't think I'm a shy person, but I kind of am kind of. And it's like hard for me to like worship not worship out loud, but like tell people about the Lord. Like I can do it, but it's kind of like hard for me. the devil tries to intimidate everybody. Sure. Stay quiet. There's kind of a built-in fear. What will people think of me or how will I be received? And and the, the devil strives to intimidate us and manipulate us. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And one of the last things Jesus told his disciples, he said that when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. When we take that step to talk about the Lord, then the Holy Spirit takes over, and he gives us the words to say, and he gives us the boldness to do it. As long as we're willing to be intimidated, he won't help us. But when we step out on faith, he shows up. And he helps us. And I bless the Lord. Anybody else? Uh, I, I will give you an update. I did talk to Brother Greg yesterday. And he sounded more like good old Brother Greg. And he's getting a little better. And, and he's hoping he gets to make camp meetings. So that would be a real blessing. So continue to pray for him. Uh, we had a good conversation. And... Uh, and somebody asked me about Brother Bobby. Brother Phil asked me about Brother Bobby, and he's doing much better. He called me on the way to Virginia, and he called me on the way back from Virginia, and he's been in contact with Brother Bobby. He's doing better. And so thank you for praying for those men of God. I know they greatly appreciate it. All right? Well, uh, I am uh, back to uh, no restrictions come Friday. Come Friday, he said, I can resume normal activities, whatever that is for me. Uh, so... Uh, uh, I didn't know if I'd be here tonight or not. We didn't know what was going on with Taya, so I had this uh, fella ready to preach, and then uh, I got to thinking it's been a long time since he's got to preach here at the church. Uh, he preaches over at the jail every Sunday, and uh, I love him, and uh, everybody needs uh, uh, this environment. Everybody needs to learn, and everybody needs an opportunity, so uh, Dr. Phil's going to preach for us tonight. Are you nervous? Yeah. All right, we'll wait a little while. If you want to sit back down, we'll wait. Alan's looking around. Come on, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea. If you've never had to stand up here, and yeah. you have no idea. It's on? Okay, Pastor. Let it rip. All right, Pastor. I didn't drink any of that. So okay. It's got vitamin C in it, though, okay? <laughs> Bless your heart. Hey, God is good, man. Well, I mean, brothers and sisters, I'm not at work, but um, the Lord, I tell you what, I'm excited and nervous, and uh, I think this is awesome, get to preach God's word, and um, I was telling Brother Jim, I said, man, I'm used to preaching to the inmates, and uh, but it's all good. I, um, 
I'm, I, I told Brother Jim I was comfortable preaching to the young ladies, and Brother Brian knows, and some of the ladies in Christ from Miss Tina to Miss Noreen and Miss Dawn. It, uh, I mean, I go over there, I get, a look, I get excited, and you're supposed to get excited. But anyway, let's go to Acts chapter 10. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, don't go to Acts chapter 26. Acts 26, first 11 verses. It, uh, I wasn't uh, going to preach out of this at first until I was telling Miss Tina, I said, something happened to me. I was witnessing to some guy in, uh, at work. He said, I said, he likes to do his Hulk Hogan imitation of, you know, flexing his arms. And I said, buddy, you look pretty good in church doing that. I said, well, yeah, I went over there and started witnessing to him. I said, um, he said I, then I told him about all that. I told him about Jesus Christ. I said, well, do you um, go to church? He said, yeah, I go to church every, you know, I go to church on Sundays. He said, I told him, he said, I, he told me, he said, I've been baptized. I said, well, bless your heart. I said, that don't mean diddly do. And, um, <laughs> and I said, man, because I, I said I could show him in Scripture where it says uh, Peter was talking about it. I just read it just the other day. And um, he said, I don't care. He said, I don't care. I said, I believe you, Phil, but I don't care. And that just struck a chord with me, and then this Scripture came to heart. And then when he said that, and that's when I, it's like this is where God gave me my thought. But anyway, let's uh, read the verses. And the first 11 verses. Then in verse 26, starting with verse number 1 and in the book of Acts. Then, then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. I thank myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before the touching of all things. Therefore, I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in the custom, customs and questions which are among the Jews. Therefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Verse 4, my manner of life from my youth which was first among mine, my own nation at Jerusalem, knew all the Jews, which, verse 5, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of the religion, I lived, that's a past tense word, I lived a Pharisee, and now I stand and am judged for the hope and the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly, serving God day and night, the hope to come. Who's the hope? It's Jesus Christ. For which hopes sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Verse 8, which, why should I, why should it be though a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Verse 9, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In verse 10, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many other saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. In verse 11, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, and, and blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities, our Father in heaven, I come to you, Lord, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray you sit down amongst us, Lord. Sit down amongst us, Lord. I pray you fill me full of the Holy Ghost, Lord, because I want to preach thy word correctly, Lord. I love you, Father, and if there are any lost that's in this service this evening, Lord, that they would get right with Jesus Christ. Bless the Lamb of God, and thank you, Lord, once again for this opportunity to preach thy word. I love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. You know something? Let me get one more. You take the Apostle Paul. King, he had an opportunity. King Agrippa came up to him and said, in other words, he wanted to know, what made you tick, boy? What's making you tick? You get the tar beat out of you. 
more than likely he's in chains because it says right here, now this is one thing, I think the Apostle Paul, now this is just my thinking, I, uh, when Paul is talking to a, the King Agrippa who holds, Paul, King Agrippa could have him killed any time he wanted to. But there's something about, uh, King Agrippa thought, saw there's something about Paul. What was it? Why was he so stinking happy? Because he says it here in his testimony. Why are you so happy, Paul? I think Paul talked with his hands because it says right here, he stuck out his hand. He says, I answer with, the, with this day touching all things. Wait a minute, where is it? Uh, verse 1, he says, I think he talked with his arms or with his hands. And that's fine. Who doesn't? But he's telling him. I find myself happy. And we should be happy. We've been saved from, from a hell. We have been saved from hell. We've given our life to Jesus Christ. Good night and the morning. I'm tickled to death that I can get to go to heaven. I get to be with my dear loved ones. Everybody does. Those who are in Christ Jesus. I mean, praise the Lamb of God. Because I can remember the day, and I know his testimony, and he knows my testimony, because every time we go to jails. Jail jail not jails but jail but um we give our testimonies and the inmates they're either looking at us like we're nuts but everybody's got a testimony and our pastor often says if you're afraid to witness to people just tell them about your life the apostle paul and in three accounts in the book of acts talks about his testimony when he first got saved to Felix in chapter 24 I believe it is and to Festus he's in this too he's the governor Paul's in jail he's getting ready to go to, to Rome I believe it is he's getting ready to go but those Festus and King Agrippa are wanting to know what makes him tick. And he's going to tell them here in a minute. Praise the Lord. I hit the spot. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day the touching of all things where I am accused of the Jews. The Jews were, t were, t they were telling him, they were accusing him of everything especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs, questions which are among the Jews. Therefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Who used to be the, the Apostle Paul, who used to be, he was going on this way because you have, he's been born again, laying aside all malice, the power of God's word, seeing we have purified our souls, obeying the truth through the spirit of the Holy Ghost, through unframed love, of the brethren, genuine, sincere, seeing the love of one another with a pure heart, fervently, with a passion, being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Amen. Seeing the, that this is subject to decay, this world, it is through faith in God's word, proclaiming the Son of Jesus Christ, that people who are born again in John chapter 5 and verse 24, in Romans, I don't think I have enough time to go through all of this, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Bless the Lamb of God. I gotta move this, I gotta move this. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that I've given my life to Jesus Christ. Bless the Lamb of God. Bless the Lord. Paul was trained in the Pharisee. Absorbed the beliefs. They are included as scribing a cause truth in the resurrection of the dead. He also embodied the great respect for the Mosaic law. He was so devout and to his tradi traditional beliefs that he actively hunted and arrested Christians, even voting that those who did not recant that should be put to death. The thing about it is, he would make them. He wanted them to recount, recant. It's hard telling what the Apostle Paul, well, Saul at the time, what he did to them. It's hard telling what he did to them. 
He would, uh, well, it, we don't have an account, but you just use your imagination. Jesus not only claimed, okay, Paul's account of his own conversion on, Paul, on Paul's way to Damascus. Jesus appeared in a bright light. Jesus not only claimed Paul, but he also commissioned him. That's what we're supposed to do. Once he puts the claim on you, you're sealed until the day of redemption. Now you work for him. Now you work for him. Now that's what we have to do. we got to do the same thing what Paul does. But we're, all, we're not all called, like the pastor says, we're not all called to preach, but we can witness. We can testify of what Jesus Christ has done in our life because I know what he's done in my life and I see what he's, he's done in, in my brothers and sisters in Christ in their life. Right. Paul's account of his own conversion, on, on the, well, I've done said that, but Jesus not only claimed Paul, but he also commissioned him to spread the news of the resurrection of the Jews and the Gentiles to bring them to understanding. The understanding of what? Of Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ can do in your life. So, I've got three points, and then I'll be done. Paul's given a testimony. In 13 through 18, Paul is given his testimony. At midday, I saw the way. I saw in the way a bright light from heaven. Everybody knows this. I mean, everybody, every Christian has heard this. But it's good for us to go back, to go back in our way to think about what God has done in our life. It's nothing wrong with giving a testimony to other people because they want to know what makes you tick. What makes you tick? What makes you want to go to church all the time? What makes you want to go to church three days a week? What makes you want to give a, a tithe of, of, of what you earn every week? Because you want to, because Jesus Christ has changed your life. Right. He's changed my life. Right. Good night in the morning. He should do something because I can remember when I first got saved, I told my wife that I got saved. And we're, I'm going to have to tithe. And she said, what? What do you mean tithe? That was a, I had a hard issue, with, a hard time with that. Because sometimes I wouldn't do what I was supposed to do. And I felt so bad. Then sometimes I would give money. I would give, I would save my money and save it. Then I would put a big wad in the, in the well, at the, first, when I, the other church I went to. But I've changed my ways a big time because I just felt conviction. I had, I, I just... Because, well, anyway, when, you're, when your spouse is not a Christian, you have issues. Right. And I, ladies and, or, and, and men and, and brothers in Christ, I know what you're going through. I know exactly because I, I had to deal with that. And sometimes it can be a bear. And especially when you're coming home, coming home from a revival. <laughs> I said, oh, crud. And you're thinking, and she would stand there. I'm not putting her down, but this is just how my life was. She said, where have you been, man? I said, are you, I said, you know where I've been? You know what time it is? And then I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember one time me and Brother Larry McGuffey walked out together, and I told Brother Larry, I said, man, I'm going to have to go home and tell my wife where have I been. And he said, just go home and tell her you love her. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, good luck with that, man. <laughs> and I said, that ain't going to work. Yeah, praise the Lord. That didn't work. I don't know what happened, after, but uh, <laughs> but you know, bless her heart, she did get right with Jesus Christ, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. I tell you what, uh, the Apostle Paul was on a mission of hate and persecution from the authority, and that's the, the same commission that's out to get him. Ain't that something? They're out to get him now. They don't like Christians. Good night in the morning. You're just trying to do what you can, and then you got some smarty pants trying to give you a rough way to go. But that's hey, that's what I say. Suck it up, man. That's all you can say. That's part of being a Christian. I don't care, I man. I say bring it on. I mean, I'm I'm in it. I'm in it because I know where I'm going. I'm heaven bound with my hammer down because I'm ready to go. Anyway, he saw the light from heaven. Paul literally saw that light before the figuratively he saw the light. Paul was sent to Damascus supremely confident in what he was doing. That's how Christians should be. He was confident in his uh, Mosaic law. That's what he was going there for, to kill more people, kill more Christians. But you know something? I'm going off the beaten path. I'm chasing a horse. Well, not a horse, but a rabbit with this. The thing about it was, 
after he got saved, you know he still went to Damascus? Yeah, right. He still went there. Right. Instead of, and the, more than likely they were thinking, oh gosh, there he is. There's Paul. He's going to do something. Jesus, come on. Let's tell me tell you about Jesus and what Jesus can do in your life. That's what Jesus, and they're looking at him like, I thought he was going to kill us. I thought he was going to kill us. But, oh, that's Jesus. Bless his heart. That's my Jesus. Mm. Woo! It'll touch your heart. He'll touch your heart. I tell you what, when I wake up in the mornings, you just get fired up. Get your notes in the scriptures. Get your nose in the scriptures. He'll touch your heart. Yeah. I mean, if you wake up, you don't feel good. I mean, who doesn't at 3.30 in the morning? Yeah. But Jesus is my everything. Yeah. I got Jesus in Kaylee. Yeah. Pastor, I appreciate you, brother. Bless your heart. <laughs> Woo, man. I'm... Yeah. I get to go. I get to go. Me and Brother Josh, Brother Brian, we all get to go to jails and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And believe me, I'm a nobody. I know where I came from. I know what kind of gutter hole I came from. I'm a nobody. And he picked me. There was an old boy named Lester Grubb. He come down and tell me about Jesus. I mean, I've told you this in my testimony. I love Les. He was such a good man. He died. That killed me. He was one of my best friends. But he went home. He was a good guy. But anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting off this beaten path. Paul was giving his testimony. He gave it to King Agrippa. What makes you tick? What makes you tick? What makes does Jesus make you tick? He makes me tick every morning throughout the day. I mean, granted, I mean, not everything is pleasant. It isn't because we're in this flesh. The testimony that, not the testimony, but what was in the uh, newsletter. We have to deal with this world, the flesh, and the devil. Those three. In heaven, they're done. We don't have to deal with that stuff no more because we'll be with him. But anyway, in verse 15, he says, I, the apostle, um, Jesus is saying, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He heard the voice. Now, we hear our voice in our hearts. We hear our voice, his voice in our hearts. He'll move when the conscience and the Holy Ghost, when they, it's just timing. It's timing. That's what it is. And I've heard my pastor say this so many times. There can be a baby crying or anything. The, the, last few minutes of the whole service is so important. It is, because I've heard my pastor say this, and you've heard it. You've got to remain so quiet. The Holy Ghost is going around. Who's having issues? Are Christians having issues? Sinners, lost souls in here. It's so important to pay attention to the gospel. It is. Anyway, Paul... Paul is under conviction. He's gotten saved. But rise and stand. Paul just give his life to Jesus Christ. But rise and stand. When we, when we give our life to Jesus Christ, we're on our knees. We're bowed. We're bowed. We rise and we stand. Tears, maybe tears are coming down. Tears of joy. Tears of joy coming down our face. Another one is going home. A transformation of the mind has taken place. Transformation in action. You know, Paul lived a moral life, but he was misguided in his religious, zealous ways. He was. He was very misguided. 
but who isn't nowadays? Because we have loved ones. I know I, I invited someone very dear to me to church this evening. I was telling Miss Tina this. She said, and she said, oh, some other time. Some other time. That'd be a good title of a message. Some other time. Some other time. That's crazy. Anyway, Jesus said, rise and stand on thy feet. Paul was going somewhere. He was commissioned by religious leaders. Now he must choose another position. He's going on another path. He went from persecuting them to being one of them. We had a song like that in our, in our, in our um, I can't think of it right now, but anyway, it was good. And uh, now, because uh, the pastor sung it, and um, I became one of them. You know, I, I can't remember the title, of it, but I always thought it was good. Yeah, one of them, yeah. That was awesome. Now, uh, Jesus appeared to Paul for this purpose, to make, you a, to make him a minister that was being a servant for the Lord. And that's what we're supposed to do, which means, which means things have see, he have seen, which he will see, and Jesus would reveal. He is commissioned, just like we're commissioned. Once we give, once we give our life to Jesus Christ, we stand up, we repented of our sins. Now we belong to him. We belong to him. Now we're commissioned. But we don't know this yet. We're just tickled to death we got saved. And uh, we're not going to hell. That's all we know. And then, but now this is when we get to learn. We get to read. We get this is because we're on the milk of the word right now. And one of these days, after we have been doing this for years and years, we'll be at the meat of the word. But now some people don't like to read scripture. In order, and every time I read this in a book, and it makes perfect sense, the more you don't read, the further and further you go back. Because you're just... You're just slipping away. But you got to get your nose in the scripture. You got to pray to him. He's got to be on your mind. You got to have a song on your mind, man. Have a song in your heart. I mean, I, I don't know why I do, but I just do. And uh, that's just me. I just sing. I just, I mean, when I'm passing out tracks, and then people are looking at me like, you're a weirdo, man. But that's okay. That's okay. God is good, man. He'll do that to your heart. But, okay, now in verse 18, Jesus said to open your eyes to the Jews and the Gentiles. That's what he was supposed to do. Praise the Lord that he came to the Gentiles. But anyway, verse 18 says, being turned from darkness to light. Let me read that verse. It says right here, to open the eyes and to turn them from the darkness to light and from the power of Satan and to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. <coughs> The inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, which is in me. So what's going to be taking place? Being turned from darkness to light, being turned from the, the power of Satan to God to receive forgiveness of sins. Who wouldn't want that? To receive an inheritance among God's people, sanctified, separated. You belong to him now. If you're a born-again Christian, you belong to him. Son, ain't no ifs, ands, or buts. You're one of his. You'll always be one of his. And if you mess up, screw up, get on your knees, get it under the blood, and get right with Jesus Christ. That's what you got to do. That's all you got to do. Live it, breathe it, eat it, and go on home to be with the Lord. Because I've got loved ones waiting for me. I so much want to see my dad and my mother and all those others. And bless the Lord. And I'm looking, getting looking, because I am getting excited about that. Bless the Lord. Now, I have my glasses on. I can't see. Okay. I tell you what, Paul made a strong case before Agrippa that's why he was happy King Agrippa was with he was with his wife I think I guess they were I guess I, there was a woman with him maybe it was his wife and so was some other guy his name was Festus he was the governor no, he was, and he had King Agrippa. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting to my, I'm getting to verse 20. The power, 
Now, verse 19, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly focus. Paul gave his life to Jesus Christ. It says it right here in verse 19. But now I just, I just, I told you, but showed first unto him David, the, I'm sorry, first to him, first unto him into Damascus, and he went to Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that, that she should repent and turn to God and do the works made for repentance. Paul, he still, I told you just not too, a few moments ago, he went back to the road of Damascus, witnessing for Jesus Christ. And that's what the same thing he's doing, that's what we're doing. That's why we got missionaries to go in these other parts of the country because I guess I'm a scaredy cat or the Lord hasn't called me to go that far. I don't know. But anyway, but showed, but now in verse 20, he says, it showed first unto them in demand. Well, I done read that. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and they went about to kill me. I mean, he had his issues. He had his issues big time because they wanted to kill him. Hey, they went for, I mean, I guess, I guess the average Jew was probably about that tall. I don't know, but my goodness. He went from killing them, now they want to kill him. I mean, come on. Hey, I don't know what it was like back then, but you can pretty much use your imagination. He had it rough. He had, a, he had it rough back then. For those causes, the Jews, I don't read that. Having therefore obtained help of God and continued unto this day, witnessing both small and great, saying none of these things, then these, those which the prophets Moses did say unto them do it come. But now, then Christ should suffer, and he should be the first, should rise from the dead, and should show light to the people of the Gentiles. Now, in verse 24, and he thus spoke for himself, Festus with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. Now, Festus, I said he was the governor. Festus said, you, Paul, you've been doing this so long, you're nuts. You're mad, son. What's wrong with you? It, but this gave the Apostle Paul an opportunity. This gave Paul an opportunity to be a witness, to witness to, king, to, to witness to him through prisons of change in Acts 26 verse 2 he was happy he insisted that God would raise the dead in Acts 26 verse 8 and 23 he experienced a heavenly vision it's changed his life just like when Jesus Christ comes into your life you, you experience a heavenly vision it will change your life and then he was more concerned about proclaiming Jesus than his own personal freedom. In Acts 26 and verse 22, you know something? It was, uh, Paul was so concerned about salvation of other people that he had very little time to worry about his own problems. You could tell in his writings. He could tell in that because he, was, he would risk his own life, shared his testimony with the man who had the power, I done said this, to kill him. But like I said before, there was something about that man. And can, can they say that about you? Or is there something about you? Is there something about you? Is there something about me? Is there something about me that's saying one or two things? I want to be like him or what makes him tick? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ makes me tick. And I hope he makes other Christians tick because not everyone's like me. And that's fine. I don't, that's, just, that's just how I'm wired right now. That's, that's just me. But I get fired up. I just, I just enjoy the, the heck out of this because I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm born again, I'm going to heaven, and I know my brothers and sisters in Christ are Christians and they're going to heaven. And my goodness, I'm going to get the most out of this that I can. And I am so glad that I am in this church. I got the best preacher, pastor in the world. And I just love every minute of it. I'm so thankful that I'm a born-again Christian. Now, I am fried up here. I am, I'm, I'm hot. Anyway, but I'll tell you, it was just when, the, when, when he said, 
he was telling, and he said, with, he spoke with himself, Festus, with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning, doth make thee mad. And then it all changes. Here's what's going to be taken of you. Because when Festus said with a loud voice, Thou art mad with much learning. Here are some reasons. I done told you this. But now, Jesus, then with his personal freedom, in Acts 26 and verse 22, my, in my last point, it's almost saved. When he made that comment, much learning has made you mad. In verse 25, he said, I am not, and Paul, I mean, Paul said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth, of soberness, for the king knoweth these things. Okay, now, here's where it's going to, where the rubber beats the road right here. And Paul asked Agrippa, what do you believe? Now, he didn't ask him if he believed in Jesus. He asked him, what do you believe? I'm going to ask you this evening. What do you believe? What do you believe this morning, this evening? Because um, he didn't ask you if you believed in Jesus. Now, if you believe the prophets, that means you would believe in Jesus. And that's true. But King Agrippa, he knew that. And a lot of times, and I know where I, I've, I've, I've experienced this before. When you are sitting with someone and you feel that Holy Ghost conviction and you're thinking, man, I'm going to get up there, I'm going to get saved. And you're thinking, there's several other, you might be in a pew by yourself, but you'll, there'll be 400 people sitting right next to you. And they'll hold you back. They'll hold you back. And think, I don't know what, his verse, and towards the end of the chapter, there was this, I think it was his wife or his mistress, I don't know, but she was with him and said, and she was talking about Paul, I don't think, let Paul have liberty, I don't think he's that bad of a guy, but she, I think she, he was, she was holding him back, I think she was holding him back, and you can let people hold you back from getting saved, almost saved, almost saved, but it says this, it says this, what that is, that's a challenge, and a decision almost was his response in verse 28 it says almost persuadest me to be saved and he says right here which, which in other words what he's saying is almost have eternal uh, almost have eternal life you almost have uh, um, that is so terrible you're almost there and nothing you just you're there but you won't get up I'm not moving you can't make me move and the devil will put them thoughts in your head oh that's terrible almost delivered almost delivered from the judgment of hell almost isn't enough Agrippa condemned himself even more by admitting how close he was he came to the gospel and clearly understood it was still rejecting it to become a Christian. Paul, I, I'm just assuming he could have been shaking his head. You know the gospel, but you won't do nothing with it. You got people like that. There might be people like this at the judgment seat from procrastinators, churchgoers, or to people who know like the Apostle Paul I'm sorry King Agrippa he knew the gospel I don't need it I don't need it what do you need this evening I'm almost done I'm almost done we have a hope sinners don't those who are those who aren't Christians they don't have a hope we have a hope a hope pardon I tell you what, your pardon's already been signed. All you got to do is just take it. But in order to take it, you got to believe. Our Lord and Savior is so long-suffering. 
All you got to do is believe. The pardon's already been signed. First Peter chapter 3, verse 20. He's a long-suffering God. Praise the Lord for that. God will never fail you. He has never lost a battle. When people are in the presence of him, one or two things are going to happen. You're either going to get saved or you're going to walk away sorrowful. That's what's going to happen. Bless the Lamb of God. I'm so thankful that I'm born again. Bless the Lamb of God. I love you, my Lord and Savior. And Father, I mean, Pastor, I'm done. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.